Can't pay rent in October? We got some big updates for you. Hey there, Christian Walsh, Cobalt Banker Wire Associates. We are brokers who specialize in helping tenants and landlords, buyers and sellers like you in the state of California. And we are here with another update. We've been doing these every month since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, and we're gonna keep them coming as long as we need to. So this month, there's some big, big changes for the first time in the pandemic, big eviction updates for tenants and landlords. Things have changed. We're gonna go over that. We're gonna cover unemployment updates. We're gonna give you the last few places that you can find money potentially for tenants and landlords. And as I mentioned, AB 3088 is the big change for tenants and landlords. We're gonna walk through exactly what needs to happen if a tenant can't pay rent for the month of October. Don't forget, we can't give tax or legal advice. Of course, we can give real estate advice. That's what we're licensed for. First, an update on California unemployment. So the statewide California numbers in July were through the roof. 13.5% was the unemployment rate. In August, it did drop. It dropped to 11.4. So that's good news. The bad news is certain industries like leisure and hospitality restaurants, uh, hotels, etc. Those employees are still losing jobs and we're very sorry to hear that. Sadly, year over year, there are over 630,000 people who have lost their jobs in the leisure and hospitality industry. So that is one tough industry. We are seeing job increases in others, but it's still a very, very tough out there, very tough market. The California EDD unemployment payments are still going out and EDD is catching up. The $600 bonus that expired in July was partially supplemented by lost wages assistance of $300 per month. State of California gave out six of those payments. That's over as well, but they are still out there issuing unemployment dollars. So if you need it, make sure you reach out to the EDD to get that money you need. So speaking of money, let's talk about some of the last few sources. So obviously the EDD is going to be one of the largest sources. So as a tenant or landlord, if you qualify for unemployment, make sure you apply. And there was a lot of money for those who are self-employed, which is put into place by the CARES Act. But unfortunately, a lot of the other funding from the CARES Act is run out. So the PPP loans, those are all gone. But the EIDL through the Small Business Administration is still accepting applications as of the day of shooting this video. So if you are a landlord, a lot of landlords will qualify for the EIDL or a tenant who has their own business, you may qualify for the EIDL and I highly encourage you to at least apply. I've included a link below so you can go directly to that application. A few municipalities were awarded federal or state funds to use in various ways to help those affected by COVID-19. A lot of those funds are gone, but some are still in place. So I recommend you reach out to your local municipality, your local government, and see if they have any grants for tenants, landlords, business owners. You may be pleasantly surprised that those funds haven't been used up. And then unfortunately, the downside is it doesn't look like there will be any sort of federal stimulus payment or plan anytime soon, but you never know. Maybe after the election, we'll see another stimulus plan that will give out uh, checks and or additional funds for unemployment. So those are some of the last few resources. It's gonna take some digging, but it's worth doing. So here's where we have our biggest changes, and that is related to evictions in the state of California. This is all brand new. So if you remember, we've covered the Judicial Council's eviction moratorium. It started April 6th and it ran through the end of August and it said no evictions other than health or safety evictions could move forward. That is over and we have a new sheriff in town, as they say, AB 3088, the COVID Relief Act of 2020, allows all other evictions to move forward other than those related to non-payment of rent due to COVID-19 and a few specific no-fault evictions. We discuss all this in our other videos, but here's what's gonna happen if you as a tenant cannot afford to pay rent for the month of October. So let's run through this. So 
You're going to let your landlord know that due to COVID-19, you cannot pay the rent for the month of October. The landlord is going to give you a 15 day notice to pay rent. And this is specific notice with specific language. And you have 15 days to return the declaration. The blank declaration is also required to be given to you by your landlord. And what this states is that under the penalty of perjury, you are not able to pay your rent due to COVID-19 as a tenant. So from there, you get that back to your landlord and you can't be evicted. There's one more important piece to this puzzle, and that is the tenant must pay a minimum of 25% of the rent in order to not be evicted. Now that 25% technically is not due until January 31st, 2021. So you don't technically have to pay anything in October, but know that it will be due by January 31st. If you don't pay by January 31st, that 25%, as of February 1st, an eviction can move forward for non-payment of rent. So for every month going forward, October through January, if you can't afford to pay rent, you will go through this exact same process and you will owe 25% of the rent for the month due by January 31st. So if you don't pay anything, you can see how that 25% is gonna stack up. If you can pay more than the 25%, make sure you do. In fact, it's the point of this bill is to help tenants get back on their feet so that they can eventually pay their full rent again. So what do you do about the back rent that you owe? The 75% and any rent from before? That is up to you and the landlord. You can come up with a repayment program. We've talked about repayment programs in the past. We highly encourage you to develop a mutually beneficial payment plan and stick to it. If you don't come up with a payment plan, then the landlord is able to take the tenant to small claims court and sue for the back rent starting March 1st, 2021. So it's very important to make sure you figure out a payment plan to avoid being sued in small claims court. We hope you found this information helpful. Don't forget the other important point is that local eviction moratorium may still be in place and that can take precedence over AB 3088. So make sure you either work with an attorney who understands the local eviction moratorium or you reach out to your local government and almost budsman and discuss with them what's in place for your local area. So don't forget tenants that as of right now, there is not a single bill or any law that has been passed that forgives back rent. This is money that you still owe. So come up with a plan to get the landlord paid back as soon as you can, and hopefully you can get back on your feet. I have heard from some folks who are having a lot of difficulties in the beginning, but are now starting to get back on their feet, and I'm very, very happy to hear that. That is the point of this bill. That's why it's in place, is to help tenants get back on their feet. Unfortunately, landlords, you're having to shoulder the burden right now, which isn't quite fair. There's a few other pieces of legislation in the work that may help with that. But thank you for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to our email newsletter where we cover topics like this and a whole lot more, including the possibility of a coming foreclosure wave. We have some compelling content on that, as well as other laws that are pertinent for tenants and landlords. We appreciate you tuning in. If you haven't, make sure you hit that like button and go ahead and make sure you're subscribed to our channel. This has been Christian Walsh, Cobalt Banker Way Associates, and we appreciate you.